All right. Um, this is already the last talk in this session. So maybe we'll relax the time at the end a bit and any only a bit and anyone who wants to change rooms um, to the final talk in another session, uh, you could just uh, leave then. All right. Um, Ari, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, this is me and my most of my co-authors also in the audience. Wave, please. Uh, so we have been uh, hearing all kinds of uh, strong versions of invisibility. Our version is much milder. Uh, it's only that uh, the dictionary user does not have to see everything that the lexicography is doing. Uh, we are doing uh, invisible stuff in the background, uh, which uh, will only be visible in terms of increased quality of the end result, not that the actual uh, things, uh, those meaning relations, would be visible to the uh, end user. I'll start with uh, a bit of background of uh, the Equilex um, um, dictionary writing system. Yes, choice of PowerPoint. The fonts are different and uh, the arrows are pointing in the wrong places. So, um, the basic design idea of Equilex is that we also have uh, explicit entities in the database for meanings, not only words. If the traditional dictionary lists words and then after every word there is a field of free text to, to say anything that you know about the word and those texts for different words are not related to each other, then uh, we connect, if, if we arrive at the conclusion, um, given the level of simplification that we have chosen, if we arrive at the conclusion that these two words mean the same, then we connect them to the same physical meaning, not uh, describe the meaning twice in, in each uh, word's entry. As um, a database diagram, this looks like uh, if we have uh, two words in English, uh, which are full synonyms, um, grandmother and grandma, uh, they mean the mother of one of the parents, and we have uh, a corresponding French word, which we consider in this dictionary, uh, given the level of simplification that we have chosen. If we consider them full equivalents, then we connect them to the same meaning. Reviewer one rightly pointed out that uh, this is not realistic, that uh, in real life, uh, meanings are very difficult to, uh, or quite challenging to define. And uh, especially if we base our selection of equivalents on uh, the plan that we first uh, describe the abstract meanings, then, then it's uh, very difficult. And this is precisely what we're trying to address with this uh, talk. So the, the current task is, uh, we have chosen two types of uh, non-equivalence or uh, non-exact equivalence uh, to deal with. One is wider and narrower equivalence or broader and narrower. Uh, and our favorite example is the Swedish murmur, which means mother's mother, and uh, its equivalence in uh, many other languages, in our case, uh, crucially, including Estonian. So, uh, uh, if we do a um, Swedish-Estonian dictionary, uh, in this example, uh, then uh, Murmur has no direct equivalent, uh, or also from uh, Swedish to English or Swedish to other languages. And uh, we would like to present that uh, it does have something that is wider, uh, which is grandmother. Uh, the opposite uh, favorite example is uh, Russian pilot, uh, which means both finger and toe. Uh, so that also does not have an equivalent in Estonian or 
I think also in English. Uh, so narrow uh, should be finger and toe. And then there are uh, approximate equivalents which are not wider or narrow, narrower, but we simply say that it's not exact, but we don't know in which way it's not exact. It's simply slightly shifted. And, and here, um, color terms would be a nice example. So, if we have this picture that we had before, where we had uh, these full equivalents uh, for this dictionary uh, of English and uh, French terms for the mother of one of the parents, then where do we put more and more? And uh, the same question about those approximate equivalents. Uh, one way would be to ask, uh, this has been asked um, in lexicographic tradition for millennia, uh, what is the Spanish equivalent for Estonian Lilla? But uh, we would actually prefer asking two separate questions. What is the color that is denoted by uh, the Estonian Lilla? And how is that color uh, called in Spanish? So we do want to pay attention to what these words refer to, not just finding equivalents on the language level. Just in case, there is a big if. Uh, all of this is relevant only if uh, dictionaries are a thing to be created in the first place. If uh, dictionaries are a good way of presenting lexical information, and, uh, and this is a piece of uh, uh, promotion for tomorrow's uh, roundtable. So if uh, we are to uh, present this kind of data in a dictionary at all, then uh, what we have uh, uh, come up with at this stage is that uh, there are two types of relations um, uh, and they are um, uh, two-directional. Uh, so if uh, uh, one thing, if A is approximately equivalent to B, then B is also approximately equivalent to A. It can't be that it's only one way. Traditional dictionaries have been created uh, in both directions separately. Uh, we don't think that this is a good idea. Uh, and therefore, if, uh, if we say that uh, uh, brut and bread are approximately the same, then this is symmetrical. They are approximately the same in both directions. Also, if uh, B is uh, narrower than A, then also A is wider than B. Uh, also cannot be only in one direction. And the most uh, difficult part uh, for practical lexicographic work is that uh, if you add more languages, then uh, this uh, gets uh, uh, expanded to all those languages, and I will have uh, an example later. So this is what we uh, are uh, thinking of at this uh, stage. We have grandmother and all those other words that belong to, the, to this meaning, and then we have a separate meaning for the Swedish uh, word mormor. And at this stage, uh, the meaning for Swedish word mormor only has a Swedish word. It does not have any other words in any other languages uh, so far, until we have discovered a language that also distinguishes between father's mother and mother's mother. If we do, then those also go to the first meaning. Until then, every grandmother meaning goes to this uh, every grandmother word, sorry, goes to, goes to this uh, second meaning. And here is one of the difficult parts of, uh, of the plan. So currently, this should look for the end user, so that if you look from the English side, then uh, uh, the entry for grandmother, uh, if you look from English to Swedish, would be that there is no direct equivalent, but one of the narrower words is more more, and the other is far more. Uh, if you look from Swedish, then again, there is no direct equivalent, but a wider uh, English equivalent is grandmother. 
Now, this is all fine in the current uh, tradition where a dictionary like, like English Swedish would be created by a collective of lexicographers who form a closely related working group, uh, who talk to each other, who divide work, who are aware of what everybody else in the group is doing. But now, uh, in our system, the French term will be connected to the same meaning. And the French dictionary will have a separate working group, uh, which may partially overlap with the English group. But um, there may be people in the French group who have no idea that the English people have related, have created these relations. So if they add uh, their grandmother to the English grandmother, then it will also appear that the French grandmother has a narrower term more more in Swedish. Although the French uh, lexicographer or the, the lexicographer who was working on the French dictionary project uh, did not pay any, any attention to Swedish. Which means that there needs to be a much wider cooperation between creators of uh, different uh, lexical resources. Changing the topic a bit uh, to uh, those approximate meanings. And this is uh, uh, from uh, a study done uh, uh, a while ago using the example from there. Uh, this is, um, we, we counted uh, the equivalents of uh, colors uh, in the um, violet range uh, in Estonian, Spanish and Spanish Estonian dictionaries. And uh, as you see, they are di directional and there are discrepancies like Violetta is mostly Lilla or Violetne, uh, but uh, uh, Lilla is only Lilla and only slightly Violetta. Also those other things, in including Morado, which does not connect in the opposite direction. So this is an example of uh, creating two unrelated dictionaries in opposite language directions and the kind of discrepancies that this creates. Uh, we also did an uh, empirical study, a, a field study, uh, presenting uh, color aid uh, uh, cards uh, to uh, study participants in Estonia and, and in Spain and asking uh, what would you call this color in your language. And as you can see here, uh, the thickness of the line uh, represents how many people replied that uh, this color would be lilla, is the thickness of this line. And as you can see here, uh, lilla is very widely used in Estonian for many different colors, um, as is violetta or morado in uh, Spanish. Uh, the Spanish lila is, is a much uh, narrower range and uh, possibly not, con uh, not corresponding to the Estonian lila. So from here we get uh, a picture uh, which we could uh, show in uh, this way that um, there is an Estonian word with its meaning uh, and here I simply compressed uh, uh, the colors from the range which were called uh, Lilla. Uh, then there is a Spanish word uh, Morado uh, with its meaning which is slightly different than the word of the Estonian Lilla. Then there is also uh, a lot of other uh, words in both languages which correspond to almost the same color but not exactly the same color. So we can't put them into one meaning. Uh, we put them into different meanings and we say that uh, they are approximately the same. Uh, this uh, detail that we have two uh, different relations uh, of the same type in, in opposite directions is purely technical. Now, a weakness test. Uh, where's an, a crucial error on this picture? 
what's missing it's it's missing and it's adding it is a huge problem yeah yeah, yeah exactly uh, so we we would need to connect these two and if we had 157 more languages it it will become nice in terms of database uh, so this is something that has to be taken care of still uh, the way of uh, showing that uh, there is a network of meanings uh, in each area there is a network of colors like some colors are more similar and some colors are less similar there are no distinct colors uh, and uh, it's simply a network uh, colors are of course only a relatively easy example used mainly because you can attach a picture to a meaning you, you can use those color cards to represent the actual meaning but there are also things like democracy or uh, goodness or uh, i don't know conference or lexicography and uh, it's it's all the same uh, is is lexicography the same as language modeling nowadays probably a good question is lexicography the same as terminology uh, is general language the same as specialized language is general language the same as uh, standard language uh, th these are all practical questions that we uh, are struggling to answer uh, in content terms but in addition to this content debate we need to be able to represent the result in a dictionary again disclaimer if we are going to create a dictionary at all and um, this is my summary uh, there is uncertainty i mean there always has been uncertainty dictionaries have always been a simplification of the real language world only now we are working towards making it more explicit so that we know where is it that we don't know it's uh, better to be aware of our limitations than not be aware of our limitations. And the second uh, problem that we have run into, as described before, is that we need to cooperate with many more people uh, compared to what we are used to. We are used to cooperating maximum 10 people, perhaps 20. But uh, if we go ahead with uh, this kind of system, then we need to cooperate with hundreds of people, many of whom we have not met, some of whom worked long before we started working, some of them will be working in the future, so it all needs to be coordinated. But uh, the, the goal is uh, a bit, uh, better resource in the end. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I talked about relaxing time constraints and now we are two minutes early. More time for questions. Are there any questions? Hi, Arvi. So what's your solution to the colors and their meanings problems? Uh, how do you represent those many, many, many uh, approximate relations? And if you don't have one, I can propose one. <laughs> yes, please do. Don't give away the mic. Well, obviously, you need some kind of a new data category, like a cluster for related meanings, and then link all the meanings to that instead of having many times more relations between the meanings themselves. Yes, yeah. that, that, that's quite obvious, but what, yeah. do you, what do you do when uh, a particular meaning belongs to uh, a large number of clusters? Does that make it any easier? Then that's a separate problem which you need to solve later, I don't know. Yeah, you, it, it's like putting that, the so thing yeah. onto the carpet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, um, it's introducing a new level of abstraction, I'd say, over meanings. You know? uh, yes, uh, and mm. one uh, abstraction uh, to that effect has been introduced uh, about 10 years ago. That's vector semantics. What semantics? Vector. Uh huh, yeah. Mm. Similarity. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, you could swing it that so, way. Just Yes. Okay. So, so you, you create a, a hyperspace where things are similar in the same way that they are similar in a human head, uh, rather than mm -hmm. trying to create categories or uh, groups or relations or and is that what you're doing is that your your answer to the problem um 
Not at this stage. I mean, we're not doing that in practice. Uh, but uh, as far as I know, I mean, this is the only solution that I know of currently. Mm -hmm. Okay, that answers my question. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Any more questions? Maybe I have one. Um, it's more, more, right? Um, and you have shown that this is a, a narrower sense than grandmother. So, and let's suppose, I don't know if there is a word for mother or father, which, is, which would also be a narrower sense of grandmother. And we connect these two with your um, narrow arrow <laughs> to the grandmother. Would the system somehow, what is the relation then between more more and the word for um, mother or father? Because there is, obviously, there is some relation between these two, right? D did you mean mother of mother? No. Mother if of there father. Was a, if there was a word for mother uh, or father. Yes, in Swedish, you mean. Yeah. Far more, yes. Ah, all right. There, there is one. Uh, and uh, the relation would be that uh, it would be beside this one, related to this one in the same way. So that uh, uh, mother of one of the parents will have two narrower meanings. One is uh, father's mother and the other is mother's mother. And there are a variety of... Uh, Combinations, for instance, in Estonian, we do have, although rare, but we do have the word for mother's mother. I mean, it does exist. Uh, and uh, we could put that uh, here, uh, related to this meaning. Uh, things become difficult uh, when we start adding languages where the kinship, kinship system is uh, very different, where they distinguish uh, between uh, mother's mother who is alive and mother's mother who is dead, or uh, mother's mother who is younger than their husband, or mother's mother who is older than their husband, um, things like that, uh, then it will become uh, increasing, increasingly difficult. And uh, the problems will compound if we add uh, more languages, like instead of creating a separate Estonian Swedish and a separate Estonian Korean, we will put them together into Estonian, Swedish, Korean, and then add 200 more languages. Then it will be interesting. Yeah, thanks. Other questions? If there are no other questions, then thanks again.